So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this video. Today I will be talking to you guys about the slingshot effect. Now, if you are new to this channel, my name is Iman Gadji. I am actually a 19 year old high school dropout. I have the great pleasure of running an advertising agency called IG Media where we help primarily info product and e-commerce businesses. A lot of them you've definitely heard of. Some you probably look up to. Uh, some of our uh, e-commerce companies that we've worked with, you're probably wearing their products right now or using their products right now. So we worked with some pretty big names. Uh, if you guys want to, if you guys are interested in working with my agency or kind of want to know just some of the names that we've worked with, uh, I put together a case study, but this case study was done January of 2019, so almost a year ago. So it doesn't have all the clients that we worked with, but just some of the few that we've worked with in the past. So you can go ahead and click on that below if you'd like to work with myself and my team. So apart from that, I also have the distinct honor of running the most successful and the leading agency online education company, growyouragency.com. So that's a little bit about me. Let's get straight into this video. So today I want to talk to you guys about the slingshot effect. Now, I have achieved what to me is, is, a, is a relatively decent amount of success at my age to what other people is an absolutely absurd, ludicrous, just, you know, people struggle to fathom the level of success that I've achieved at my age. Is that to me, it's just kind of like normal. And a lot of time people ask me like, Iman, you know, what is one thing or what do you really, what, what can you attribute your success to? And I never really had a name for it. I never really knew what to call it until around a month and a half ago. And this is when I actually created this presentation. I've been super busy since then. A month and a half ago, I was actually taking uh, two of my team members, uh, Kieran, who's my product manager, as well as the copywriter for our clients for IG Media and Danny, who is uh, the media buyer for, for my advertising agency, both full-time employees of mine, taking them to Iceland. Thought we'd do a little two, three day Iceland, uh, thought we'd do a little two, three day uh, Iceland company trip. And I was sitting on the plane, looking out the window, being introspective as usual. And I quickly bust out my computer and I start putting this together, this presentation, because I realized the reason that I am where I am in life is because of, and once again, I never really had a name for it. I, I, I hadn't coined a term for it, but I like to call it the slingshot effect. And I don't know if this is actually a thing, maybe like, and, and that's the crazy thing. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll think of concepts and then I realize that no, it was actually just from a book I read four years ago. So I hope this is not some concept from four years ago, but really the point that I was trying to get and the thing that was always in my head when people were like, okay, why have you managed to achieve the level of success that you've achieved? It's because of the level of sacrifice, how much I needed to sacrifice in order to propel myself forward. And that was kind of where the analogy of the slingshot effect came from. So ladies and gentlemen, let's jump into it. So multimillionaire at age 19, as I said, this is something that uh, is just is, is crazy to people. It's, it's, you know, it blows people's minds, the fact that I've been able to achieve this uh, at the age of 19. And once again, people ask me all the time, you know, how did I do it? And I never knew what to call it until I said, I started thinking, I'm like, look, it's, it's the fact that I took steps back or what looked like steps back in order to take steps forward. It's, I, you know, I had all my private victories. I had all my victories in private and no one knew about any of this stuff until I started getting all the success and then I got propelled forward into the limelight. So let me explain how it works. Loading, all right, the loading phase. The more you pull back the slingshot, the more difficult it gets, the more tension is applied. And this is where you're in control and you steer the ship. Now, when you let go, you know, once you apply a certain amount of tension, you let go, you relax, and you let things um, uh, take their course. And this is quite a simple formula. You know, the longer you pull back the sling, the more effort you apply to pulling it back, the farther it's going to go. And this is really how this applies in the real world. It's the exact same thing. The more you can hold out, the more, uh, mistyping there, but the more effort you can put into the loading phase, the farther you'll go personally. And this is an obvious, uh, you know, this, is a, this might seem like a very obvious concept to you guys, but I wanted to s dissect it from a, a micro and a macro level. So for example, if we look at a 14 day micro view, right, because we all understand, oh, you know, we all understand the concept of like, oh, sacrifice, you know, we, we all understand work hard, 
sacrifice, this, uh, you know, like these are very generic sort of terms to us. But if we bring this to a 14 day, very tangible micro view, let's look at it this way. Some people are letting go of the slingshot on a daily basis by having a drink at the end of the day or having a cop fee catch up with a friend, or maybe they're watching some sort of bullshit Netflix show. You know, that is them pulling back the slingshot. Maybe they've done, you know, a, only 60 minutes of real actual deep focus work that day, maybe four or five hours of like bullshit, you know, kind of half working, half not uh, work. And then maybe at the end of the day, they're watching two, three hours of some Netflix show, or maybe they're having a, you know, a glass of wine with their friend or like a beer with their friend. And that's them letting go of the slingshot. Now, from a weekly perspective, you know, some other examples are they're loading the slingshot all week, but then ruining it, or ruining it by going out at night too much. And some people load the slingshot all week, but will, will ruin it by eating shit food on the weekend. Now, from macro view, I know a lot of entrepreneurs that are fucking up their growth because they travel way too much. You know, I've just come from a very long stint of traveling and that really fucks your schedule. Then there are people, for example, who go through months where they just don't push themselves enough and take, thing, uh, take things easy. So here's how it all makes sense. From the age of 14 to 17, I read a book a week and that made it, and, um, and made that a huge priority while the rest of my friends were having fun on the weekend. You know, from the age of 14, I've religiously gone to the gym four to six times per week and made fitness a huge priority of mine. Meditation, once again, for the last five years, I've been meditating at least 10 minutes a day religiously, even when the benefits slash effects weren't apparent at all. Stacking, from the age of 14 to 17, I was stacking all of these positive habits slash attributes on top of each other, and the result of that was a breakthrough year once I found the agency business model. Within a year of finding the agency model, I was making multi six figures a year income because I'd set all the right foundations. So ladies and gentlemen, you know, I have a lot of you guys, for example, who are frustrated. You're like, look, my parents, don't, they, you know, they don't let me move forward with my agency or I still have school or this or that. And some of you guys are, are situ or maybe you're even in a university and you're like, look, my parents, they pay for my university and like, I have to make this a priority. I understand. And because of that, your earning potential is lower. I understand. But one thing I can say is there are fundamentals and there are things, there are, there are habits, routines that if you stack, those will carry those through, you, you'll carry those through for the rest of your life. So for example, from the age of 14 to 17, like let, let's just put this into perspective. From the age of 14 to 17, I basically went from like, I, and right at the beginning of 17, I started making some serious money with my agency once I found the agency business model. But from the age of like 14 to 17, like my best ever month, I think was when I was flipping Instagram accounts and like one month I made like two and a half G's. But like my, like, you know, an average best month, like if you look at three months sort of um, blended together, maybe like a 1500, you know, from the age of 14 to 17, three years at it. And then from 17 to 19, you know, going from, you know, at, at the beginning of 17, making, you know, 1500 a month to, you know, literally what a year and a half later, a year and a half later, two years later, you know, clocking in two, $300,000 months. Can you, you know, to go from zero to 1500 a month, $1,500 a month, three years, and then to go from 1500 a month to 300, 250 to 300,000 a month, 18 months. Can you kind of see the disconnect there? The reason that is, and the only, the only way that those 18 months, those 24 months, those 12 months, so basically the, the, the breakthrough one or two years that I've had, the only reason that that was possible was because as, uh, because as I said, I had 36 months, I had over three years of stacking those habits. It was three years of me pulling back the slingshot. It was three years of my friends going out on the weekends and me being like, no, fuck that shit. I'm staying in, I'm reading, I'm going to gym, I'm meditating. I'm fo focusing on me. I'm pulling back my slingshot. I'm stacking my private victories. You know, that was my priority. That was my thing. Okay. So as I said, while Everyone else, you know, they might do a little work and then reward themselves. And here's the thing, guys, I think rewarding yourself and building a positive feedback loop around hard work is amazing. Like, I think if you can muster up the ability to do even four hours of deep focus work, which by the way, 99.5%, 9, 99.9% of entrepreneurs don't know how to even do four hours a day of like actual deep work. Okay. So. If you can do four hours, even just four hours of deep focused work in a day, at the end of the day, if you want to go reward yourself with a smoothie, if you want to go reward yourself with like watching an hour of your favorite TV show, I have no issues with that at all. I have no qualms with that at all. 
But what I would say is if we look on sort of a more uh, macro level view, if you were looking at three months or six months or 12 months, the person who pulls back the slingshot the most, the person who says no to going out more times, the person who says no to going to the cinema with a friend, the person who says no to eating shit food, the person who says no to a poor underachiever mindset, the person who says no to all those things and who pulls back the slingshot. And as I said, if you think about pulling back a slingshot, there's, it's, it gets tough. There's tension. It gets tough. There's tension that's built. It's not pleasant. It's kind of, it feels very uncomfortable at a certain point. You know, you feel as though everything's going to snap. Everything's going to break. That is the exact same way that life goes. All right. So for those of you guys who, who want to know how to succeed and how to win and how to win big, as I said, it is literally just that it's pulling back the slingshot. It's pulling back the slingshot. It's stacking all of those private victories for not just days, for months, for years, for decades. And then eventually that will come into fruition because you need to understand that everything in your life now is not a direct correlation of what you did yesterday or three days ago or a week ago. It's a direct correlation of what you did three years ago, of what you did three months ago, of what you did some, in some occasions three weeks ago. You know, you need to understand that you are the actions that you take today. If you do 30 days of meditation, if you do 30 days of going to the gym, if you do 30 days of, you know, putting in at least, uh, and once again, you know, it shocks people when I tell people, Hey, just do th when you first start, just do three or four hours of work a day and that's it and stop after that. But I'm talking about deep focus work. I'm talking about the sort of work where you have some binaural beats. You've got brain FM playing, you have some headphones on your head where I'm talking about the type of work where your phone is in the, uh, is on the other side of the house, turned on, actually just turned off, put in a vault. I'm talking about the type of work where you got some incense sticks lit. I'm talking about the type of work where you meditated earlier that day. You haven't checked social media at all. You haven't even turned your phone on that day, or maybe you have your phone on, but it's on airplane mode. So you, that way you can just listen to audiobooks, come straight back home from the gym or go for a walk, come home and get straight to work. I'm talking about that sort of work. I'm not talking about the three or four hours of work where you wake up, you immediately roll over, you check your phone, you might go to the gym, but you're still on your phone, you come back, um, you watch a YouTube video, and then you get to work. Because I guarantee you, if you do that, if you start your day that way, you ain't getting shit done. Trust me. So, as I said, if you can do even 30 days of going to the gym, if you can do 30 days of meditating, if you can do 30 days of doing four hours of just deep focused work, you're not going to see those results in 30 days. You're going to see those results in six months, in 12 months. When you read a book, you don't very rarely, sometimes when you read a book that applies so, has so much application to what's going on in your life right now. Fair enough. That those are, those are outliers. Sometimes you read books like that, but most of the time when you read books, you won't reap the rewards of that for three years, five years, 17 months, 23 months. Okay. So let's get back into it. I'm actually a place in my life and, and it's actually when I, when I made this presentation, this was, as I said, um, as I said, when I made this presentation, it was around 45 days ago and 45 days ago, I was actually a place in my life where I was letting go of the slingshot more, you know, for my personal happiness, because for three years, I literally sacrificed my entire fucking life. I put everything on the line and I just, I, you know, I was just so, it was just this monastic, just obsession focus, you know, so I'm actually or when, at the time of making this slide, you know, which is around two months ago at this point, I was actually at a point where I was spending three, four months just kind of returning back to my personal happiness, kind of just returning back to that childlike spirit in me. Now, as I said, I haven't had a chance to record this for, for two months. I've been so busy. Now I'm actually at a point and, and you know, in, in your life, you know, the seasons always change. And I'm not talking about like the literal seasons. I'm talking about like low, like legit seasons change, you know, things change, focus change. Now I'm at a point where once again, I'm focused on loading that slingshot for the next four or five, six months and just stacking more private victories. Okay. So the way that I see it is I'm at a place right now where at the time of recording this, I'm 19 years old. Um, you know, I make a decent amount of money, a couple mil a year. And I, th I think about this a lot. I think about what I could be like at 25 or 35 or 45 and different benchmarks. But even if I think about roughly around five years from now, when I'm 25 years old, here's kind of the two tracks that I could go down. 
income slash net worth, I continue to make a res respectable multi seven figures a year, you know, pl pretty similar to now, you know, to most people, if they can make multi seven figures a year, uh, and, and, you know, have that sort of spending power, I mean, it, it, honestly, they'd go fucking crazy. Like, I, I get that I'm in a very, very blessed position. I work very hard to get here. But also, I've had some incredible circumstances. The fact that I learned about the agency business model when I was 17 changed my life, it changed everything for me. Um, but anyways, my point is, you know, if I look at my income net worth, you know, I'm, I can make a respectable multi seven figures a year as is now social events, you know, maybe a normal social event is going to a nice dinner with some friends and picking up the bill, which which amounts to, you know, fi uh, 1500, you know, let's say I go to like, a, let's say I go to Nobu with 15 friends, pay the bill 1500 chill holiday, you know, once again, uh, let's say I go to holiday with some of my friends, we'll pay for our own flights and, and split a dope mansion for a week total cost 2000. And partying, let's say I go to the club and bring along 15, 20 friends, table bill is 4K, and I pay to treat my friends slash business associates so everyone has a more comfortable night. Like my point is what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make, build an image of what I could be like at 25 years old. And to be honest, actually me, this, this image of 25 years old is pretty much just kind of my life right now at, at 19. Um, you know, not the specific nuances and, and picking up the bills and stuff like that, but kind of what the, the sort of stuff that I can afford to do and, and that I do do. So that's me at 25 years old. If I don't stack my private victories or at 25 years old, I could be worth hundred mil. I could be making eight figures a year and funneling that aggressively into investments passive income from my investments, pay for my lifestyle. I could be making eight figures a year, funneling all of that into real estate. The passive income from that pays for my lifestyle. Social events, you know, Monaco Grand Prix with my friends on a uh, rented yacht, you know, at 10K, uh, 10,000 pounds a day. Yearly sh social events include our Basel, Basel World, Fashion Week, Monaco GP, et cetera, et cetera. Holiday, when I have a holiday, I fly to my 3 million pound Marbella Villa that I rent out on Airbnb as an investment in other times on a private jet with my friends monthly. Partying, I throw monthly theme parties for 300, 400 friends. This includes real estate moguls, models, artists, restaurateurs, hotel owners, nightlife industry, titans. These parties are highly coveted and cost 20 to 30,000 per event. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to depict, you need to ask yourself, what do you actually want from life? And then you need to have this idea of the slingshot effect. And that needs to dictate every single one of your decisions. You see, I know that I'm at a point in my life where with the knowledge, with the knowledge that I've acquired and I've gained, I could continue making kind of like a couple million a year living an incredible life. You know, I'm, as I said, I'm very blessed. Like I live an absolutely incredible lifestyle. And to be honest, right now in my life, like I don't spend anywhere near the amount of money I make anywhere near the amount of money I make. But, and here's another thing that I want to throw in there. Another track or another sort of barometer could be philanthropy, you know, because this year in the last three months, I've donated roughly around 150,000 pounds to charity, to building schools in undeveloped countries that, that I'm so fucking proud of that. Like the fact that in 90 days I've been able to donate what equivalent to $200,000 to build schools, to build three schools in Nepal, like that's incredible. And at 25, I might be at a point where like, once again, it's a, it's yearly tradition that I donate quarter million dollars to charity. And that could be me at 25. If I keep playing at the level and the intensity that I'm playing at now, or I could be, it could be a yearly ritual that I donate $1.5 million. And every single year I can build 30 schools, 15 schools, 30 schools. Once again, depends on the country. Right, you know, this year we've been building schools in Nepal. Next year, I'd love to build schools in Colombia and then build schools in Dagestan and Russia, where I'm from. So, I gotta look at these two things. And yes, it's it's one thing. It, you know, it's one thing to say that look, you want to make multi seven multi millions a year, but you need to understand the debt that comes with that. You need to understand the sacrifice that comes with that. You need to understand the fact that you will need to release. You'll need to pull back the slingshot much farther than the next guy who, who only wants to make multi six figures a year or maybe even multi five figures a year. You need to understand that like you're going to be sat next to a guy who's making 400, 400. Th and once again, these, I know these seem like big numbers to you, but guys, look, if you're watching this a channel and you apply these principles, you're going to be filthy rich. Like I have absolutely zero doubt about it because here on this channel, we talk about, we don't talk about very fluffy concepts. We talk about shit that actually works. And I feel, I've said this to you guys before, like I feel as though if you watch this channel, you are so much, you're so much more conscious. You're so much quote, more, uh, more quote unquote woke than, you know, all the other channels out there. Like if 
you know, like I, I just get a feel for, I've got a feel for you, you know, obviously I've met hundreds of you guys at this point, you know, through the Grow Your Agency parties, um, through, you know, uh, the actual Grow Your Agency community. I've talked to thousands of you guys, um, you know, when you guys bump, you know, once or twice a day now, it's, it's super, super cool. You know, someone will come up to me, recognize me, uh, one of you guys on YouTube, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, back to my point, like if these numbers scare you, don't, like don't let them scare you at all. Because I said, you know, you guys, if you're watching this, this stuff and you apply the stuff that I talk about on my channel, I have absolutely zero doubt that within a 10 year slope, every single one of you is going to be not every single one, because you know, not everyone actually applies this stuff, but I'm talking about the people who actually apply the knowledge within a 10 year slope. Like I have absolutely zero doubt that every single one of you guys are going to be making six figures. Once again, the main caveat there being if you apply the knowledge. So a person who wants to do multi, a person who wants to make eight figures a year, AKA make $10 million a year, 10 million pounds, $10 million, whatever, has to act very, very differently to someone who wants to be making 100K a year. You know, because so even, you know, I, even with my mom sometimes, my mom sometimes she's like, Iman, you're, you're literally 19 years old. You have a detox coach, you have a full time health coach, uh, slash personal trainer. You have, um, you know, you've worked with meditation coaches, energy coaches in the past. You, you, the, you like the fact that you have systemized and like, you've automated so many areas of your life. You've worked relentlessly on, on, on every single part of your business. You've worked relentlessly on, you know, your, not only your, your business, but your health, your spirituality, you know, expanding your horizons, really looking at what your blind, uh, blind spots are, et cetera, et cetera. She's like, you know, th this all just seems so like, especially the stuff like with like detox coach and like, like, for example, recently I've started, you know, having a glass of wine or drinking again, but like for a year and a half, like I just, if, it was dinner. Like I remember even when uh, me and my ex-girlfriend, like we'd be at a dinner, she'd want to have a glass of wine but, and she, you know, she, she'd ask if I want a glass. I'd just be like, no, like, like some, and you know, obviously she always understood, but there'd be some points where she'd be like, look, we're literally on holiday. Like have a glass of wine. I'm like, no, you know, like for me, it was like, okay, yeah, I can have a glass of wine and yeah, I might be able to do the stuff that more regular people do, but then I don't get to build as many schools in Nepal that I get to build. You know what I mean? So really my point with this is, and, the, and you know, this point that I'm trying to make with these sort of, the, you know, the, this idea that I always have in my head of like, who, I, who could I be at 35? Who could I be at 45? Who could I be at 25? It all has to, you know, I'm always rejigging and I'm trying to recalibrate and think of like, what sacrifice am I, am I willing to give? Like, for example, I can tell you guys right now, like, do I want to be in the top hundred richest people on earth? If it happens, it happens. But I know the level of, like for example, Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk level of sacrifice. Am I willing to do that in my life? No. Like I will tell you, like you will get so many testosterone filled entrepreneurs trying to act macho who will be like, yeah, I'll outwork everybody. Like, for me, no. Like, am I willing to work? Am I willing to work literally disgusting like 14, 15 hours? I've done, I've done that in the past weeks on end. I've, I, you know, I know what that's like. Am I willing to do that consistently? No. <laughs> <laughs> I said, am I willing to have the sort of work ethic that Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos has at in, in little, you know, in weekly or maybe potentially even at some points in my life, monthly bursts, if I have to? Yeah, for sure. Am I willing to have their sort of lifestyle? No. So my point is you need to understand what you are willing to put in to get out. There's a lot of people I know who make, you know, even a lot of people in Grow Agency who make hundred fifty two hundred thousand dollars a year sometimes three four hundred thousand dollars a year and you know i'll talk to them i'm like dude you you know you very easily could get to 800 900 even a million a year why don't you like well, why would you not you know because that's kind of like my philosophy i'm like why would you not and they're like well because you know i make 150k a year but i also travel all around the world i don't ever work past 4 p.m and keep in mind, guys, that you don't just start off by making 150K for no reason. You know, these people have worked their asses off to get the position they're at right now, but they're at a very happy, comfortable point. And they're like, look, Iman, I love the fact that like, I stop working at three, 4 p.m. and I chill with my girlfriend the rest of the day or I chill with my boyfriend, you know, if it's a girl or I chill with my husband or I chill with my wife uh, the rest of the day and we have a beer and we chill by the beach and read and enjoy my life. 
Like, I, he, you know, they'll tell me that like, I wouldn't want your life. Some people look at my life and they're like, I would not want your life in the level of responsibility and constraints you have on your life at your point. Once again, self-imposed constraints. So I love, I love the responsibility I have because once again, it's my decision. So it said, that's really what I'm trying to do here is I'm really trying to build two tracks for myself and always ask myself, what level of sacrifice, how far am I willing to pull the slingshot back before I let go and I really enjoy the fruits of my lab, uh, labor? And that's, some, for example, something I've been doing in 2019. 2019 has been an incredible year, but financially and business-wise, I did not accomplish what I wanted to accomplish in 2019. Far from it, because I was pulling back the slingshot for so long that eventually at this point, at you know, last half of this year, you know, from, from June onwards, I was like, look, I just need to develop my childlike spirit again. I need to smile, I need to laugh, I need to you know, be a kid again a little. Um, so back to, uh, back to the point that I'm trying to make. And the point that I'm trying to make really is there's level to, levels to this. And as I said, you, know, you gotta ask yourself like what, you know, five years from now, what level do you wanna be at and what are you willing to sacrifice, right? You need to decide how extraordinary you want your physical slash material world to be because that decides how extraordinary your dedication and sacrifice is. You know, if you want your external life to be a 10 out of 10, you know, which is I'm talking supercars, I'm talking private jets, I'm talking this, I'm talking, you know, millions, millions donated to charity, I'm talking, you know, whatever it is that has some sort of value to you, um, then the, you will have to match that with an equal or greater work ethic and sacrifice. Okay. Private victories, public victories, you guys know this, you know, when you see someone roll up in a, a Lamborghini Huracan or maybe a, a McLaren 570S or, you know, whatever car you're into, Aston Martin DB11, this, that, you, you know, whatever, whatever car you're into, you see someone with a, with a you know, a, a AP or a Patek or, a, you know, a Richard Meal, don't, do not, you know, do not ide idealize the, the, the material thing they have. Don't, don't fawn over the public victory, fawn over the private victory. Know that there was thousands of hours that went into it. There was ridicule, there was fo uh, FOMO that they dealt with, there was stress, there was isolation. When you guys look at my life, you know, you guys look at my life, you guys look at the, the incredible things that I have. Um, don't, like, don't don't think about you know for example like you guys know i am at the, currently where i am in life i have no, i have no interest in cars i live in london like i i like to walk i like to walk and and listen and, you know and um reply to voice notes i like to walk and you know listen to audiobook like you know that's just that's just me i don't really have a use for a car i don't I couldn't care less about cars but let's say for example sometimes you guys look at my watches you know it's a sixty thousand dollar watch right here I have around, you guys know I have around 12, my, my watch collection is worth coming up to around, well actually over half a million dollars right now. Uh, I've got another watch coming in that I could have bought, hopefully coming in, hopefully getting the call up for it, you guys can probably guess, but uh, for the price of that watch, I could buy a house very, very I could buy multiple houses. Uh, I could buy a Lambo for the price of that watch. Um, and once again, obviously that watch I'm buying cash, I'm not financing it. So. When I get that watch, and I probably will make a video when I get it, if I get it, hopefully, as I said, if I get the call up. Um, but don't look at, like, don't look at that public victory as, don't look at that public victory and fawn over that watch and this thing and that thing. Like, yes, you know, yes, right now I'm wearing a $60,000 watch. And, you know, yes, some, I look down at it and you guys know I love horology. Like, I actually appreciate watches. You know, no one has 15 watches unless they actually, unless they, uh, you know, actually really appreciate the, the craftsmanship that goes into, into it. But don't look at this watch and be like, oh wow, you know, and fawn over it. Understand that, yeah, cool. Cool, I have this like little shiny rose gold thing that I get to look down at and I'm like, oh, this is, this is pretty neat. But I also went through fucking years of ridicule. I went through thousands of hours. I went through stress. I went through just so much FOMO of my friends going out and me just being at home working on a Friday night, on a Saturday night. And I went through so many times that just people were like, oh no, have a, have a sip of alcohol, have, just have a glass of wine with us. And I'd be like, no. I went, it's so many times where my friends were like, hey, have, come have a quick coffee catch up with me. It's like, no. Like I remember there was like 18 months when I had that sort of breakthrough 18 months, there was so many of my friends that I almost lost because they were like, dude, like, we know, like we've been with you from the beginning. We know 
the, we know what your work means to you and we're seeing, you know, we see the fruits of your labor, but like, did you just forget about it? Cause it'd be like, I'm talking like best friends of mine that like, I would forget to message for like three months, you know? And like, even anyone who knows me now and knows me personally knows that like, you know, I, I very rarely respond. Like, you know, for me, I got my work and my, my focus that I need, I, I, I need to keep on track, but nonetheless, you know, like don't look at the public victory in all look think about everything that went into those private victories and instead respect the person who has that public victory not for their public victory but because you know the amount of private victories that went into it okay so as i said you know just kind of repeat this never watch in awe of a public victory instead respect the private victories that went into it so I want you guys to comment below what is one public victory you want to have in the next five years. So what's one crazy life experience? You know, maybe you want to pick up a Lambo. Maybe you want to fly in a private jet for the first time. Maybe you want to buy a private jet. Maybe you want to buy your mom a house. Maybe you want to build, you know, build a school in a, in an underdeveloped country. Like, like I've, uh, I've done and you know, me and the team do, um, like, I don't know what is one public victory you want to have in the next five years. And you know, it can be as fucking materialistic as possible. Like, you know, anyone who says, you know, uh, money won't make you happy. The truth of it is if it won't, but also just get filthy rich, buy all the shit that you could ever want. And then you'll learn that. And I think, you know, you'll never be able to internalize the fact that money won't make you rich until you, you just get filthy rich. <laughs> you have every single material possession you could ever want. And the next thing is, what did you think of this video? What do you guys want to see in the next video? So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, look, I get this asked. Uh, I get people asking me this all the time. What is, what is it that made you so different from everyone else? What, what is it that you did, it, you did to succeed when, you know, other people, they, maybe they had a little bit of success and they fell off and this thing and that thing. It is the fact that religiously, even at, even where I am in life right now, I've never forgotten the, the slingshot effect, and I've never uh, uh, I've never forgotten that concept, and I've never let go of that concept, and I've never let go of the fact that I need to if I want to have a higher caliber of public victory, if I want to have even crazier external material material or external or just results based outcomes in my life. I'm going to have to double down even further on the private victories. And I'm going to have to go to even farther depths that I've gone and push myself even further and sacrifice even more and do all of that. Because once again, they're proportionate, you know, they're proportionate to each other. You don't get, you don't put a, you don't have a couple pub, uh, private victories and do a, have a couple private victories and, and for a limited amount of time and have a monumental public victory that doesn't happen. As I said, they're proportionate to each other. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave those, uh, leave a comment with those two things down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.